Hello and welcome to this video how to start Flowable with Docker. I'm Valentin Zickner and I'm going to walk you through how you can configure your local Docker to connect to the Flowable Artifactory and how you can use the Flowable Docker images inside your local environment. Now, first to get started, we actually will need to log in to the Flowable Artifactory. Therefore, we can simply type docker login artifacts.flowable.com. And then as next step, we need to enter our username that typically ends with adbots.flowable.com. Once we have done that, we can enter our password and eventually we should see a message logging succeeded. Now, next we can use an editor of our choice to create a docker compose YAML file. And in that file, we will for now just simply copy and paste uh, information from the documentation. So when you go to uh, administration, then installation, then install installation with Docker, scroll a little bit down, you will see that Docker compose file. For now, I'm just going to copy it. And while we then starting up uh, all those different pods, I'm going to walk you through what is in there. Now we will use docker compose up dash D to basically create the container, create the volumes and so on and start it. Now that is starting in the background, even if the command already returned, not all the nodes are started yet. So that is going to take a little bit until this is done. Meanwhile, we can look at this documentation here and that provides us different information about um, Docker and Flowable and how to use it. Now, first of all, uh, there's here again, the Docker login command. Uh, so you can also just copy and paste that from here, as well as um, there is the possibility to generate an API key uh, inside the Flowable Artifactory instead of using uh, your password directly here to log in. That has the advantage that you don't have your password for artifacts.flowable.com uh, stored basically in there. However, those are typically, at least for Mac and I think as well for Linux, not stored inside the local Docker configuration. They are stored inside your key store. So they are encrypted most likely with your password as well. So you might not need to care about it, but anyway, it's good to know that it exists. Now we have also here a list of uh, the different Docker images uh, we are use uh, we have available. So Flowable Work uh, is one we use, which we use. Flowable Design and Flowable Control are um, used as well. Flowable Engage you can use as an alternative to Flowable Work. It also gives you the chat capability of Flowable. And uh, besides of that, it also includes everything what work includes. However, when you use Flowable Engage, you also need to have active MQ warning. Uh, all of those Docker images provide you the possibility to, pro or to use additional custom jar files. And therefore you can simply mount into the direction, uh, directory additional class path, whatever you would like to have exposed there. Now inside that Docker Compose file, we have a few different uh, sections. So we have database here. Database uh, is uh, for us a Postgres database in version 14. Obviously feel free to change that to a newer supported version as well. Then we have in here uh, the database, which we would like to have configured, uh, username and password to that database as well. And we have here a list of volumes uh, which we can use and that volume is basically to store the data of the database also in case we remove that container otherwise our data would be gone now uh, next in here in that list there's Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is basically the search engine which is used inside flowable that is uh, here in the latest version uh, 7 uh, there might be also here a newer version available. Uh, we again use a volume to um, uh, avoid whenever you upgrade it that um, the data of Elasticsearch is removed. In case your data gets actually removed, 
you can restore all that data from Elasticsearch based on your database. Obviously, when you lose both, then you uh, don't have that possibility anymore. Now, flowable work is the next section and flowable work. Uh, there's here just mentioned latest. Uh, you can also replace that with a specific version number uh, in case you need to. Um, we store all the content items which you have uploaded inside slash content storage, which is again a volume we have mentioned over here. So even that, whenever you turn off the uh, container or remove that container, it is still there as long as you don't remove the volume. Now here we have also Elasticsearch configured and Elasticsearch is also one of the dependencies in here so that um, node is starting basically after Elasticsearch as well as uh, the database is configured here and the database is also one of our dependencies. However, that depends on just says us that those kitten containers are created before it doesn't tell us that those applications are already completely started whenever we start our flowable work. And that's the reason why we have here the restart policy configured. And the restart policy just tells us that when flowable fails to start because of one of those dependencies are missing, then we go ahead and just uh, restart flowable as well. Now the next in that section is flowable design and flowable design uh, is our modeling environment. So that connects to flowable work. That's what we have in here in the first few lines. So that's how you set that up. Here we have the internal host name, uh, which is basically the name of the service over here. We configure that we would like to have uh, the deployment API URL and the undeployment API URL. So that tells us that we are able to press the publish button in flowable design and as well the unpublish button. We have here just the database configured without Elasticsearch. So flowable design does not need to have Elasticsearch. And that I should have mentioned also before for work, we expose the port here for flowable work to 8090 and for flowable design, we expose it to 8091 and uh, it depends again on our database. Now, flowable control um, itself is the last of the three flowable applications we are using right now. Flowable control is also in the latest version. Um, we configure it to connect to work and we also have the database in here. Flowable control gives us an admin view. So it's more like for administrative purpose. You can also re-trigger some things like jobs in there and so on. Uh, that is exposed to 8092. Now, there are a lot of properties in here and for an entire list of the properties, you can just look here uh, on below properties. There you have an, a list there. And also just check out the release notes where you have specific version numbers, which you can put in here instead of latest. Now let's go first to flowable design since we still need to upload our license file. So uh, therefore we can just open a localhost 8091 and here we can sign in with the username admin and the password test. And once we sign in, it's actually going to ask us if we would like to upload the flowable license. Uh, there we can just say, yeah, we would like to do so and uh, then flowable design refresh with a license. In case you do not have a license yet, um, you can either use the license from the enterprise trial in case you have that one, or you can reach out to your contact at Flowable. Now here we have the possibility to create new apps. Uh, so we could just create a new demo app. And in that demo app, we can create a new uh, simple process. So let's just call that Hello world. And here I will quickly just um, model a process. Uh, just as a reminder here on the left side, you have the um, different uh, stencils available inside the BPMN context. Here in the middle, we have the canvas where we can draw something. And on the right side, we have all the properties. Here at the top, you have a toolbar where we can save on the left side and later on publish on the right side. 
Now I select the start event and then I'm going to take an end event over here. I will drag and drop the user task here, call that hello world. And once that is done, I'm going to save this one and then I'm going to publish it to my Flowbo work installation. Now that is published. And so I can go now to 8090. And um, over here, I need to sign in again with the username admin and the password test. Once I signed in, I have the possibility in here to press new and say work. And that basically now allows me to start my hello world process. So I have now my first hello world process instance in here. Last but not least, we also have the Flowover Control application. So let's go to Flowover Control. Again, the default credentials here are the same as well. Username admin and password test. And we have several options in here. And one of them is processes where we can look at our instances. And in that list, we see now, for example, our hello world process definition here as well. Now that's already it from my side. So everything is started. You can use those flowable applications uh, just with Docker Compose as mentioned here. Uh, please check out our additional videos uh, we have done, which also explain you what you can then do with flowable. And thank you for watching this video. See you next time.